and did you press the mic? Mm -hmm. My name is Skyler, um, and I am giving you my first speech. I forget the title of it. Icebreaker. The icebreaker speech, and I'm going to tell you about me. Um, the title of this speech is "Living to Learn and Learning to Live." <clears throat> you are filthy. You are rich, and you are wise. And I can see that you're very, extremely happy. Who are you? Who are you? What are you? Some kind of a thing? I know what you are. I know what you are. Let me tell you a story. And this is a story about my life. And as I tell this story, I'm going to weave in some metaphors so that you can really get the learnings at a deep, unconscious level. Some of it may seem a little bit abstract, but it's for a purpose. So I want you to really pay attention. Can you do that? Can you do that? Can you do that? Sure. This is participation 100%. So thank you for participating. Looking back on my life, I noticed that there are stages in the development of a human being. This thing we call a person. And I would summarize these stages in threes. The early vision, the glass door, and the legacy. I'm going to use the podium. For me, the early vision, I would almost call that an imprint period. And this is a very interesting time for me. How many of you actually can recall memories from your childhood, like when you were two years old, three years old, a baby in your crib? Can you recall the time, the, the memories and things that were going on around you yeah. during that time? Great. I also can recall the things that were going on around me at that time. Uh, one of the first experiences I remember as a young baby is my mother taking me home from the hospital and setting me inside the house. We had a wood floor. And I remember that wood floor. And I remember laying there in the carriage looking up and seeing all of these adults, these big, tall people walking around. And I know one of them was my father. My early childhood was filled with interesting, interesting dreams. I once had a dream. Every night I would have this dream. I'd be laying in my bed sleeping. And I would dream that I was thrown out into the middle of the street. Dream that I was thrown out into the middle of the street. And I didn't know what that was about. But the reason I focused on it so much is because it happened quite often. It happened a lot. Why am I being thrown out in the street? It may have had something to do with the fact that we were homeless. Who knows? It may have had something to do with uh, a fear that I had. My mom and her husband at the time would fight. So maybe that's what that was all about. I recall being a young boy, and uh, we went to, to have our, some clothes washed, and we had bleach in the back seat. And I was a very curious type, so I opened the bleach, and I spilled it in the car. We had a Camaro. Remember the Camaro with like the Thunderbird on the top of the hood? <laughs> we had that one right there. And I spilled the bleach on the floor. And my mom, she didn't chastise me. Um, but I think she learned a very good lesson about her son's curiosity. <laughs> this time, this was a time of, this was an interesting time. It was a time that would shape my destiny. You know, I often attach to my adult life the experiences of that early life. I don't know if you guys are going to understand this, but often I will have this nostalgic experience and I often wonder, is this a result of, is it a result of my childhood shaping my adult life? Or my adult life giving my childhood meaning? And I juggle that. I juggle that. What's so, interesting, what's so interesting about this is that it seems that uh, um, the, the early part of my life, the imprint period, was represented me and my
my purest form. Um, and and the next stage of my life, which was the glass door, marked the beginning of the confusion of the learning of the growth of this amalgamation of giving life meaning and purpose and figuring things out. During my glass door period, and I call it the glass door, do you know why? It seems that the hard wood of the door is very solid and determined, yet the glass is so easy to break and reach and get out of beyond that, that wood. It'll, it'll settle in. Hopefully it'll settle in to me before you. <laughs> this was a time where <clears throat> I was learning to be independent, do my own thing. It was a time that was full of drama and a time where I began to notice how adults, the, the neurosis of adults, I noticed that adults couldn't look me in the eye. I didn't know why. I was just I was a young person. Why couldn't they look me in the eye? And as an adult, I kind of have some understanding. Um, there was a time of, this was a time of great trauma. Um, I had a brother-in-law who shot himself in the head playing Russian roulette. And I went to the funeral, and I remember walking up to the casket, and I saw the bullet, the hole where the bullet entered his skull. And so they didn't patch that over or anything like that, which is very bare. And I'm sure that shaped me somehow. Um, I was shot at as a young person during this last door period. And I wasn't a bad kid, but I just lived in a bad neighborhood. <clears throat> and my father, this was a time when my father passed away of AIDS. I was maybe 18 at the time. So that was the glass door. Anyhow, I'm going to move on to the legacy just to speed this up. Again, this is spoke to you in metaphors, and you will understand why. This, the legacy period is uh, where I move into the adult, into the, to adulthood and start to clarify uh, my identity, my uh, esteem, my purpose. And it is the time where I decided to live the creative life as opposed to the creative life. The creative life is the person who, they work a nine to five, they go to church on Sundays, they watch TV at night, they go to bed. It is the life that leaders give to followers, the creative life. The creative life is the life that leaders develop for followers. Whoever came up with circumcision <laughs> was a leader, and he had an idea that he wanted to pursue. And centuries later, we still do it, and we don't know why, because we just live the creative life. So, in closing, on the journey of life, we hail from God, from the mind of God, as depositories, absorbing information as we go along. What I know for sure, folks, is that what we are is more than what we are. Thank you.